There are five major problems with the 18 plus Lego set lineup, and I don't really see many people discussing these issues. So today we're gonna be taking a look at them and we'll go for a bit of a deep dive to see what's actually going on here. Thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video, more about them later. Okay, so let's get started with a brief history. If you've been around for a few years now, you've probably noticed that things are starting to change. Starting in 2020, Lego began releasing sets under a new 18 plus line leading with the phrase adults welcome and this was in an attempt to pull in a more mature demographic with expendable income. Adult fans of Lego have always been around but the strategy of the Lego group has changed. Instead of marketing sets as 16 plus or for advanced builders they introduced the black box art which has been standardized across multiple themes. The goal here is to offer a premium product that attracts the normies aka people who don't have a basement full of Lego with tons of sets on display. People that might be enticed by some some nice box art and maybe the prospect of an undying plant that never needs to be watered or a huge centerpiece for their living room that will start conversations whenever people come over to visit. This direction has obviously been hugely successful for Lego with them seeing record profits year over year. I think there is a legitimate downside to this though and this leads us into our first problem. The prevalence of Lego sets with high price tags has made many themes so expensive that they are just simply inaccessible for a large portion of the population. For example, if you're a fan of Lord of the Rings, your only option for a set that's in production is to spend $500 on the 18 plus Rivendell set. I think this may have been the best designed set of 2023, but I haven't bought it yet because of how expensive it is. The next set that's rumored to be released for Lord of the Rings is for a similar price. These price tags are so high that they're simply unattainable for the average person. I have friends who don't regularly buy Lego sets that love the way these sets look, but they would never dream of buying them just because of how expensive they are. The Harry Potter line introduced these Hogwarts play sets where you could buy sets one piece at a time to end up with a large build. And I think if a similar approach was taken with the Rivendell set, people probably would have been much more open to buying things piece by piece so that they could end up with the whole thing after like a year, maybe two years of buying small sets. I see a similar issue with the Lion Knight's Castle for fans of the Lego castle theme. It's a great set, but it's $400. The cheapest option for a castle set in the past five years was a $100 playset, which is still pretty expensive. When I was a kid, I could find multiple castle sets on store shelves from a few bucks all the way up to $80 on the high end of things. You could make the argument that these themes retired for a reason and they shouldn't really be on shelves anyway, so we should just be grateful for what we get even if it's expensive. I can definitely see that perspective, but I still wish that some of my favorite themes were more accessible. So I'll stand by what I said. Regardless of what I would like to see, I understand that we can't have every single theme under the sun on shelves in retail stores at all times because space is limited. This leads me to the second thing that I wanna cover, which is the lack of affordable play sets on store shelves as a direct result of the 18 plus line. I've taken a look at some data to help illustrate what I'm talking about here, but first, while we're on the topic of data, let's check out today's sponsor, Surfshark. I spend a lot of time building, filming, and editing at home, so it can be nice to hit up a local coffee shop for a change of scenery. I use Surfshark to make sure my data stays secure when connecting to public Wi-Fi networks. The VPN masks my IP address so I can remain anonymous and keep my location private. Surfshark VPN encrypts all of the information sent between your devices and the internet, and it even allows you to virtually change your location. I've used this when traveling to other countries countries to access TV shows and other content that's only available back in the US so I can stay up to date on my favorite media. I also like to have the TV on in the background while I'm building Lego at home, so having Surfshark has been great because it opens me up to so much more content that isn't locally available. Surfshark is offering a great deal where you can enter my coupon code FIREBIRD for an extra three months free at surfshark.deals firebird. Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you can try things out risk-free by clicking the link in the description to head over and sign up. Okay, so back on the topic of 18 plus sets, we're going to take a look at the Lego Star Wars theme specifically for a minute here. There have been multiple sub themes introduced, including the helmet sets, dioramas, and more recently, the Starship collection. These sets retail in the $50 to $100 price range, and they're aimed at adults. They are stocked in stores like Walmart and Target and online through Amazon. The issue that I have here is that these sets are taking the place of the more affordable play sets. You have 18 plus sets 
sets taking the shelf space that used to be occupied by Lego sets made for kids, specifically in the $50 to $100 price range. I think that this is unfortunate because it puts people with less expendable income in a difficult position where they don't have as many options for cheaper sets for their kids. In 2013, there were seven playset options in the $50 to $99 range. In 2023, there were only three but there were plenty of 18 plus set options in that price range. So not only are we seeing less play sets in this price range, we are also seeing price inflation on play sets that are being turned into 18 plus displayable sets that are targeted towards adults. The best example of this is the Dagobah Jedi training diorama that came out in 2022. There was actually a set that came out in 2018 for $30 called Yoda's Hut. With this set, you got three minifigures, the hut build, and it was 229 pieces. The Dagobah Jedi training diorama also came with three minifigures, a hut build, and of course you get quite a bit more landscaping here. This set has 1,000 pieces, but 177 of those are one by one trans green tiles for the swamp, so I wouldn't necessarily give it too much credit for its piece count. The main issue here is that this set costs $90. Even with all the extra parts and nice presentation, you can't tell me that this thing should be three times the price of the 2018 set. I think that LEGO is putting a price hike on this set simply because it's marketed towards a adults. I could see $65 maybe being reasonable, but $90 is just crazy. And really, at the end of the day, the kids are the ones who lose out here because they don't get to buy a set for $30. It's now $90 and it takes the shelf space away from what probably would have been a mid-size or large play set at that price point that they could enjoy. The other sets in this price range that came into play recently are from the Starship collection. These sets are for display only and they have no play features. Now, I think these are actually a great alternative to UCS sets because they're much more cost effective and they don't take a giant shelf just to display them. For the premium price tag that they're commanding though, I think that at least one minifigure should be included with each set. I have a hard time justifying such a high price point when there's no minifigure included because I usually end up parting my sets out anyways and using them for other things. I'm still surprised though that they never put minifigures in the helmet sets either. I really don't understand why LEGO doesn't just go ahead and include a figure in every single one of these displayable sets. I mean, how many people do you think are going to go and buy the new buildable R2-D2 set just for the exclusive Darth Malak figure that comes with it? Taking a similar approach to the 18 plus display sets for Star Wars would probably boost sales and make fans happier. In general, it may seem like I'm not a fan of the 18 plus sets, but honestly, I just wish that they were more affordable and didn't take the place of play sets. If it was up to me, I would prefer to just buy all 18 plus sets directly from the LEGO website. I know that's never going to happen because I'm sure LEGO's making a ton of money off of all of these sets being in stores but that's what I would prefer at the end of the day. As I was looking through the LEGO website doing some research for this video, something stood out to me. On the about page, it says that the mission of the LEGO group is to inspire and develop the builders of tomorrow. I would assume that the builders of tomorrow is referring to children. Kids are the main target audience for LEGO products. Do you think the LEGO group is living into this mission with all of their themes? I'm not suggesting that LEGO has abandoned this mission altogether by any means, but they've made a few decisions that lead me to question things a little bit. I love the displayable sets that are targeting adults. I'm an adult, I like displaying things, but the problem here is when the focus on those 18 plus sets takes away from what sets are available for kids. Affordability of the product is critical to the longevity of the LEGO group. If children can't afford the average LEGO set when they're growing up, there won't be any nostalgia to bring them back as an adult, and I think that that could be an issue further down the line. Let me know your thoughts on this topic in the comment section down below. Thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to click the link in the description to get your discount.